Well, hey everybody, here we are in Santa Clara at Velocity 2011, and I uh, ran into an old friend of Red Monk, and I thought I'd get an update about kind of what's going on and then uh, what's going on in the NoSQL area. But why don't you introduce yourself? Sure, uh, I'm Justin Sheehy, I'm the CTO of Basho Technologies. We make React, Web Machine, and some other open source software. And so, so how, how's, uh, I mean, how, how's things been going for Basho? Oh, it's been going fantastic, right? The past year or so has been really exciting. Uh, you know, things are looking better on the money front and more important on the developers front. <laughs> Those uh, are the two good fronts. For that, that's right, that's all that matters. <laughs> and so, you know, we're looking forward, the next few months uh, are really going to be amazing. We've got, you know, a, a fantastic team that's only gotten bigger and better. Um, you know, the next few months, people even just watching GitHub are going to see things start flying really fast and furious. Yeah, well, well, you know, why, why don't we rabbit hole into that first? Like, how, how are you fitting GitHub into, I mean, obviously the development side, but how does that fit into the business side? Like, sure. So, you know, a big part of our business is it's not just a software business, it's an open source software business. And today, the easiest and best way to engage with the open source community, no question about it, is GitHub. And to me, that's much less about the specific technologies involved. You know, Git's great and all that, yeah. but it, it's much more about the, the way people are used to interacting there. And it's a very, you know, contribution and communication heavy environment. Right, right. And since we moved our development to GitHub, you know, the amount of community involvement with the code as opposed to just the ideas and the documentation uh, has really shot up. And it's been great for the product. Huh, that's interesting. So there's sort of trackable more contributions code-wise. Yes, no question did. about it. The the rate of people actually contributing improvements. Has and, and, and do you pay attention to like people who follow your stuff and who fork it and things like that? We, we look at it and we track it because yeah. you know, you'd kind of be crazy not to since the information's there. Yeah, yeah. But I'm skeptical that things like number of followers and things like that and maybe even number of forks mean all that much yeah. compared to things like number of pull requests. Like that's, yeah, that's yeah, heavy yeah. engagement. Yeah, I guess I guess. Right, is, if someone does yeah. a fork and then does a bunch of work in it, I like to see that. Yeah. But I also see that there are a lot of projects out there that get forked a lot, and by itself that doesn't yet mean anything, right? It's, it's maybe yeah. an early indicator. Huh. Well, but to me it's when people start talking back, and that can be in the form of pull requests or lots of other things that right, is really right, right. exciting. And and so so for people who don't know, can you explain the the, the, the portfolio that you guys have? The, sure. The products? So our core product and the thing that we sell is Riak. It's a distributed database. And the two biggest reasons people go to it are for extremely high availability and for easy scalability. And that easy part's a big deal. It's really easy to install, <laughs> really easy to operate, really easy to interact with as a developer. And you know, around that, we've built an ecosystem of other open source tools that filled niches we cared about and that we put out there into the open source community. Things like Web Machine, which is a toolkit for building you know, REST style applications. Things like Rebar, which is a build tool and all those sorts of things. But React is the product that the company's built on. And, and, and it being a database, to super generalize it, <laughs> like, yeah. like what, what kind of data are people storing in it most commonly? Sure, so there's not a thing, from a business point of view, there's certainly not a, you know, I would love it if there was a vertical to focus on, right? <laughs> right. But it doesn't work that way, just, just the same way that it doesn't work that way for MySQL or Oracle or anything like that. Um, it's not the same shape of a database as, say, the ones I just named. It's not a traditional table-based relational database. But, you know, we've found that the minor adjustments that people make from the relational way of thinking to the way that they store their data in React are very small compared to the operational adjustments they would have had to make to solve their avail availability and scalability problems right, right, with right. those kinds of systems. And so there's sort of performance benefits. And like, like well, 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 don't let me preload the question, but what is, for someone who is kind of used to SQL or relational stuff or, you know, the traditional ways of doing databases, like what... Can, can you walk through sort of like a typical, I don't want to use a charge word like enlightenment, but how, how do they get to enlightenment? They're like, oh, I get it. Sure. Like, so, here's why I should be using this rather than MySQL. Sure. Or, so or I, I actually don't think people shouldn't be using those other systems sure, also. Sure. There's, there, there are a ton of applications. And I can think of a couple times really recently that I've said to someone, I think the right answer to your problem today is MySQL. Right. Right. You know, those are fantastic technologies. Or that, Oracle Coherence oh, or something. Sh sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> Cameron and company built a great product, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but... Um, you know, there are cases, it's less about, it has almost nothing to do with, you know, SQL or anything yeah. like that. And in fact, most people using the databases that speak SQL to them, a lot of the time, they're not writing SQL, right? They're going through ORMs or some other yeah. document layer. And if they're doing that, the impedance mismatch that they've got to their relational database is huge already. 
and they don't actually have to change much about the way they're thinking about their own code. There are object layers and document layers for things like React, too. Right. And so for a lot of the programmers that happen to be using a relational database, most of them aren't really using it for relations anyway. Yeah. So for many of those people that aren't using it for huge ad hoc relational queries most of the time, it's really easy. And then when they do want to do interesting ad hoc queries, yeah, we have a different programming model, but that part's not hard. Right, right. Well, that makes sense. So, so then broadening the topic a little bit, like we were actually talking about this while we were recording. I, I kind of forget when NoSQL kind of started, but it did seem to reach like an apex of of fury. Oh, like, definitely. Like, like about a year ago or so, and, and you know, you always know when these things nowadays reach some fury when. There's almost a redefinition of what the word is, and I remember there was a big discussion of what is the in oh and no. Oh word? yeah, so <laughs> remember that. And so, uh, <laughs> anyhow, I, I mean, like, well, first off, like, what? How long do you think this, whatever you want to call this space, has been the the, the sort of post relational database is the only thing sort of. Sure. So I started really 2008 and 2009. Yeah. Um, you know, you had the first NoSQL events that named themselves that. Yeah. Right yeah. then, and it's been going ever since. But I think that you know, while you could use phrases like you know, post-relational or whatever to refer to the, the artifacts, the databases, I think that the term NoSQL doesn't make any sense as a technology category. Hey. Right? You know, it's a negation. Right? You, can, you can play games all day trying to redefine what the no is, and maybe it's not only. Hey, but, it, but even if you do that, it still doesn't tell you anything about the category. Right? Yeah. It doesn't tell you anything about what the things are. Yeah, yeah. And so instead of trying to play games with the word to make that OK, I think it's not a category at all. But what it is, and what has been going on for the past, I guess, three or four years now, is I think of it more as a movement. And you know, by that, a, a series of events in time. And what that movement is about, or against, and what the no is really about, is about a monoculture of database architecture. Yeah, right? Right, right, right. In, the, in, the, in a sense that a few decades ago, Oracle won. Right? Oracle won the early database wars, predating, you know, MySQL certainly, predating modern PostgreSQL yeah, yeah. Uh, and so on, and Mi Microsoft SQL and all these, Oracle defined the database architecture. Everybody else followed. Everybody that now. And so for the past couple decades, when people were building a new software project, they'd make a whole bunch of interesting choices, right? What languages to write in, what operating systems to use, but they weren't really making an interesting choice about their database architecture because choosing MySQL or Postgres or Oracle isn't that's a choice on detailed yeah. features, it's and, not and, architectural And, and like you were saying, they built up the whole OR mapping world to kind of isolate themselves from that unmovable choice. <laughs> right. And so if NoSQL is anything, it's a movement that's sort of breaking up that monoculture of database architecture, right? A lot of the products that get put together and, and various software components as part of NoSQL are part of a movement. They're not part of a useful category, right? Many of them right. have very little in common except that they're all a sort of objection to the idea that there's only one way that's sane to think about structuring and storing your data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not that you need to switch from the old one way to a new one way. That's equally broken. <laughs> but right. the idea that just like you choose operating systems and you choose programming languages and you choose frameworks, you can choose database architectures. And that's what's been going on. Yeah. And I think it's finally starting to reach a point of in sort of general awareness. Even a lot of people that you know, in a lot of situations, quite rightly, still want to pick the same one they picked before, are becoming aware that there's a choice, and I think that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. So you, you definitely see a lot more exploring of other options nowadays. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I guess that is like that. That was the last thing is to ask like where where the NoSQL stuff is at the moment. I, no, I think you're right. It is people are aware of it. As we used to say, it's kind of on the short list. Yeah. And <laughs> like pe people are willing to consider it. Right. And instead of just thinking it's some wacky experimental thing. And even if they don't consider it, they know they could have. And that's what wasn't, yeah, yeah. wasn't even true before, right? You know, most developers five years ago weren't even aware that there was an interesting choice for data storage other than the Oracle-shaped model, whether it was embodied in MySQL or Postgres or Oracle or right. whatever. And so now, they know that choice exists. Just like, say, someone that only ever programs in Java, right? Just to pick an example of, a, of something outside databases, might choose, nope, I'm never going to you know, write my programs in C++. And they never choose that. And it's never on their personal shortlist. Yeah. They know that choice exists. And that's the, the piece that's new in databases right now, in that the mainstream software community is starting to become aware that a choice exists, even the people that aren't really caring about that choice that themselves choice. just yet. <laughs> That's right, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Well, great. Well, thanks for the, uh, the update. Oh, thanks a lot. It was my pleasure.